Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing and it's time to review not one, not two, not three, but four brand new covered call ETFs from one of our favorite Canadian covered call ETF providers, Hamilton ETF. So they are launching four brand new yield maximizer series ETFs, all based on different sectors. You got one for US financials, one for healthcare, one for energy, and one for gold producers always an exciting day. So these ETFs should have a launch today, February 7th. This is an estimated date. So it's very, very likely that while you're watching this video, today is the first day they started trading. Obviously, I'm filming this video a little bit before beforehand. So what we'll do in this video is do a deep dive into these four ETFs and maybe do some comparisons to other similar a Canadian covered call ETFs that have similar holdings. We'll try to find the differences uh, between them but of course, these are yield maximizer ETFs, so they are yield uh, first covered call ETFs, which this channel is all about. So let's check out these four ETFs together. Then we'll quickly discuss some pretty big news happening for HYLD and HDIV, Hamilton's all-in-one leveraged covered call ETFs, because we've got some big news on that front, which of course is related uh, very much so to these four uh, brand new yield maximizer ETFs. So a lot to get to. Let's get started. everyone let's go through the four etfs together here they are all yield maximizer etfs you have fmax which is the hamilton u.s financials yield maximizer etf you have lmax the healthcare one emax energy and amax the gold producers so you even have you could see here that the initial net asset values uh, aka the stock price should start at about 16 dollars and you even have the first initial monthly distributions or approximate rather monthly distributions declared so it's very easy to figure out the yield right or the initial yield on your own all you got to do is find the annual distribution rate which is you know for example for f max it's 16 cents times 12 right the monthly times 12 to get the annual and then you just divide that number or take that number and divide it by the initial nav times 100 and you'll get the approximate starter uh, yield so these are yield maximizer etfs uh, so obviously that's in the name so you, we can expect really nice uh, high yields all managed by Nick Picard, which is Hamilton's chief options strategist. So these ETFs will be managed by Nick and his team and the growing uh, you know, options team at Hamilton ETFs, which has been growing since they've been coming out with more and more in-house products, in-house uh, covered call ETFs. So let's do a breakdown of these four ETFs together, everyone. Uh, and we'll try to figure out really what are the differences between you know the competition. So let's start with FMAX is really the one that I'm the most excited about personally. I find it's really, really unique. So FMAX, just like the name says, will focus on U.S. financials. Notice it doesn't say U.S. banks. It says U.S. financials. And by the way, all four of these ETFs have the same management fee. We'll just look at the FMAX one here. But they all have the same management fee of 65 basis points so very very standard for a covered call etf which we know takes more work to manage all the options these are not passive index etfs of course and the option strategy the covered call strategy as well is the same for all four of them so as we know yield maximizer hamilton etfs uh you know very unique in that they do at the money calls uh, which means higher cash premiums but when you do at the money calls you do give up uh, all the upside based on the percentage that you write but all of these do write options on about 30 percent of its holding so yes they're at the money calls but the coverage ratio is not that high at 30 percent which means at least 75 70 percent rather not 75 70 percent of the portfolio does not have any covered calls on it so it will appreciate will appreciate or do whatever the stocks inside the portfolio do and keep in mind guys you see the approximate signs this is hamilton does have an active covered call approach which means that these could change but the uh, you know 30 percent at the money or at the money on 30 percent of the holdings is basically in normal conditions they can it, it could vary based on conditions as well so very important to point out this is you know hamilton does have an actively managed uh, approach when it comes to their covered calls but definitely yield first right at the money you get a lot more premium definitely a lot of yield here but you do get a lot of growth potential as well so all four etfs will have uh this covered call strategy so 
What's so special about the financials yield maximize the ETF? There's a lot of, you know, U.S. bank covered call ETFs on the market. Well, what really struck me the most right away are the holdings. So the, 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 the uh, holdings are here already, or should I say the indicative holdings as of February the 7th here when the ETF is scheduled to start trading. So if we go through it, it's not just the, the big banks, which of course are there like JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, et cetera, et cetera, Goldman Sachs. But you also have things like Berkshire Hathaway. I really love that you have all three credit card companies in here, Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. You also have uh, asset managers like Blackstone and BlackRock. I really, really like that. Some insurance companies, some like Progressive, Marsh and McLennan. The, I mean, I actually had to look some of these names up because I didn't know what companies there were, like this one here and Fiserv and CME, Intercontinental Exchange. You have also S&P Global. So these guys manage, you know, S&P Global manages the S&P indexes, for example, and you got some companies that manage exchanges. So really a nice mix of U.S. financials here, all kinds of financials, not just the banks, which, you know, there's an advantage in that. And by the way, 25 companies all equal weighted. So I find that's really interesting. Uh, definitely, in my opinion, better than just, well, I wouldn't say better, but I would, how could I say this? Less cyclical than just having all, just U.S. banks, right? If you have just the U.S. banks, obviously, there's, it's a very cyclical sector. But if you throw in some, uh, you know, things like Berkshire Hathaway, which is really a holding company and credit card companies, asset managers and, and exchanges, things like that. You make the ETF less cyclical than a pure U.S. bank covered call ETF like uh, a competitor like ZWK, which if you look at the holdings, everyone, it's just the banks, right? It's, it's just banks. You, obviously, you have Bank of America, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, but also some more regional mid-level banks here. So uh, same thing when it comes to call another U.S. banks covered call ETF. It just has the banks here. If you look at the holdings, uh, you'll see, you know, 15, 16 holdings, just the bank. So I, I thought, you know, FMAX very, very, very unique in the fact that it's more diversified. So there's less, it's less cyclical. You have a lot of great stuff here, not just the U.S. banks, although they're in there as well. LMAX, moving on to the healthcare one. So the healthcare one here has uh, 25 healthcare companies, all equal weight as well. You'll recognize a lot of them. So these are, you know, there's typically very similar, always the same companies in the healthcare space. You're going to, you're going to, you know, shouldn't be a surprise when it comes to the holdings. Uh, and again, same, you know, same management fee, 65 basis points, same cover call uh, strategy as well here. So what makes this one uh, unique is that it has 25 holdings. It's also equal weight if we actually compare it to the king uh, in terms of AUM, HHL. HHL has been around for almost 10 years. It has 1.5 billion. It's the biggest by far healthcare covered call ETF. And the biggest difference I notice is that number one, HHL has 20 companies. LMAX has 25, a lot of the same companies, of course, but it's really the management fee, right? 65 basis points. HHL does have slightly higher management fee of 85 basis points. So that's 20 basis points higher than LMAX. So that's definitely a, a big difference. Um, but yeah, the Hamilton Healthcare, they're going to have their own healthcare ETF here, which is great. Uh, moving on to the energy one, EMAX. So if we look at the holdings for this one, and again, I know, I know I'm repeating myself, same management fee, same cover cost strategy. If we look at the holdings, it's about 75 US, 25% Canada. And uh, there's about 15 or 14, 15, 16 companies, uh, something like that here. Again, equal weight. And what's different about some other ETFs, energy ETFs, and we'll, we'll look at them in a second, is that this one here, Emax, is just oil and gas producers. There's no pipelines in here. So this is, you know, really if you're bullish on oil, you want to capitalize on pure energy on the oil. Uh, this would be a great one. So you have just the big boys in here. You'll recognize a lot of them, of course, Canadian Natural Suncor, the two biggest oil and gas producers in Canada, Cenevis, uh, and a tourmaline as well. But then you have really, uh, all the rest are pretty much uh, US. So you have mostly US here, Exxon, Chevron, and a lot of other ones you'll probably recognize. So just oil and gas producers here, mostly in the US. And if we compare that to a big one, ENCC uh, from Horizons ETFs, this is only Canadian companies. There's 10 in here. And there's also the pipeline. So there's six oil and gas producers, uh, Suncor, Canadian Natural, Tourmaline, Cenevis. Those four companies are also in Emax. But there's Enbridge, Pembina, there's Kiera, 
So we got four at NTC. There's four uh, pipeline companies, six oil and gas producers in ENCC, and it's only Canada, whereas Emacs has only oil and gas producers, and it's mostly in the U.S., and we know that U.S. stocks tend to have uh, better options, liquidity. So this is definitely one to consider if you really want capitalize. If you're bullish on oil, oil prices, this is probably going to move higher if oil prices rise than ENCC because it has uh, pipelines as well. So that's really the main difference uh, I noticed between Emacs and um, ENCC from Horizons. Uh, moving on to Amax. So Amax is your gold producers. When it comes to gold producers, everyone, you got the big boys. Everyone should recognize a lot of these. Barrick, Newmont, Royal Gold, Goldfields, etc., etc. Franco, Nevada, Wheaton. So uh, nothing super unique with this one in terms of holdings. You pretty much have very similar, if not identical, holdings to other uh, gold producer covered call ETFs in Canada. It is equal weight. There's 14 holdings here. And if we just compare it to uh, the other the, another Horizons cover call ETF, GLCC, well, it's pretty much almost identical, except it's equal weight. You notice here the percentages are the same, whereas GLCC is market cap weighted. Um, so what does, does that mean is that if a company is much, much bigger in terms of market cap, it's going to have a bigger weight like you see here. And then the smaller uh, the weight, the smaller the AUM, the smaller the weight. So that is really the main difference I found between GLCC and AMAX. The names are uh, mostly the same, even the management fee is the same. So that pretty much um, goes through these the four brand new yield maximizer ETFs. I have to say, I'm definitely personally my opinion here. Um, uh, I really like FMAX. Very very unique. I love the fact that unlike its competition, it has really uh, a mishmash diversified U.S. financials instead of uh, just the bank. So really, really cool in here. But all four of them have very small, unique traits. So guys, very exciting. This pretty much rounds out or is, uh, you know, very close to really completing, I would say, the Yield Maximizer series. You have a, pretty much almost all the major, all the sectors here. Uh, not every single one of them. Maybe there's more that's going to come out. Always, always exciting when Hamilton comes out with new stuff, but they got a lot of the major sectors covered here. So another important thing I want to talk to you about is HDIV and HYLD, which ties into these four new ETFs that have just come out. So in case you didn't know, and you could see this, uh, if you just go to Hamilton's website, you go to press releases and you'll see this press release here. Very, very exciting stuff. Very important press release here where they announced a permanent reduction in the management fees to HYLD and HDIV to zero and huge distribution increases. So you see that uh, they're reducing the management fee of HYLD and HDIV effective February 7th, uh, you know, exactly coinciding with these four ETFs. Um, and they're saying that they're basically done so because they're internalizing or they're, they plan to complete the internal internalization of the holdings of HDIV and HYLD. They've also increased the distribution. So it, it's really uh, not um, rocket science to understand why. So if you look at HYLD and the latest uh, holdings, uh, you see that there are, as of, and I'm filming this on February the 2nd, there's still some third-party ETFs in here, things that are not managed by Hamilton, like JEP, JEP, QHHL, RYLD, GLCC, NXF. So what they're basically saying is that by the 7th, they're internalizing everything. So we could assume that all these third-party ETFs are going to be kicked out and replaced with all Hamilton yield maximizer ETFs, which they, you know, they've done most of it already. So we could expect JEPI, JEPQ to be, and RYLD to be kicked out. Uh, HHL is going to be kicked out. Now that LMAX is there, they'll probably swap HHL for LMAX. They'll probably swap GLCC for AMAX and NXF for EMAX, right? It's just common sense, right? So very, very uh, exciting stuff. And that's why the management fee is going to go to zero because if it's their, all their own ETFs inside of it, they, they can't charge double management fee. So you could essentially say that HYLD and HDIV will have a 65 basis point kind of management fee because all their yield maximizer ETFs are 65 basis points, except for H bond, a little bit less at 45, I believe it is. So that is basically what they mean that, you know, HYLD is not going to have, there's no more management fees on top uh, because as of now they have to pay, you know, the management fee to JEPI and JEPQ, et cetera, et cetera. So this is great news. And because of this, they were able to raise a distribution for both HYLD and HDIF. So we see a big one cent jump. 12.1 cent to 13.1 cent. And the same thing is going for uh, HDIV. It also increased the distribution from 14.1 to 15.1 starting in February for the February one. 
And uh, same thing is going to go for HDiv, right? Obviously, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that they'll probably swap HHL out for LMAX, GLCC for AMAX, uh, HTA almost done, but that's that's going into QMAX and NXF into EMAX. So very, very cool stuff. And I do have a, another upcoming video. Hamilton did agree to sit down with me and talk in depth about HYLD and HDiv, the changes. Uh, which you know are scheduled to complete on approximately the 7th of February, which is going to be the day uh, this ETF comes out. And when we will see all of the internalization, well, it's going to be in early March. So in early March, they typically update their website in the beginning of the month. So we should see all these changes here in early March. And Hamilton has agreed to sit down with me to talk in depth about HYLD and HDIV. So let me know what are your burning and most uh, important questions that you have regarding HYLD and HDIV. And if you look in the comment se section below and you see a question that you have or a good question, make sure you give the thumbs up. So the top most voted questions, I will ask Hamilton ETFs live in the next video. The next video will be completely about HYLD and HDIV, which I love, which I own myself, right? This is, this is kind of putting all the yield maximizer ETFs together and adding that 25% leverage to increase the yield uh, even more. So very, very exciting stuff. Very exciting day when it comes uh, for us income investors in Canada. So uh, let's stay tuned. Let's, I'm very excited to talk to Hamilton ETF. Let me know what you think of this video. Give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Which yield maxer ETF out of the four new ones are you most excited about and why? Let me know in the comment section below. It would be greatly appreciated and see you next time.